I just start doing the data science and uh, I'm just going to go over some some stuff, uh, but you know I haven't done too much on this, so I'm just going to tell what's going on. Uh, from Pasadena City College, uh, we just uh, entered our third year of Aspen Prize of United States, and we are very very excited about it. I uh, just want to you know mention that we are. Uh, few miles uh, up uh, of Los Angeles, if people don't know where Pasadena is, that we are carrying the most coronavirus in the, oh, wow. the state of California, staying home as much as possible. Uh, some of the things that I want to go over it is one of the biggest problems that we have in Pasadena City College, which I think is not only for Pasadena City College, is having heavy units uh, courses, and that is forcing our students to stay a lot more than what they need to in the college. Uh, one hand, we are uh, making them more prepared. On the other hand, they're staying a lot longer. So I'm going to uh, touch up with uh, some of those things as we go along. Uh, so I guess the next one. Okay. All right, so some uh, the, just a small notes. I'm not going to go through the detail of these things uh, that our school, uh, just I think most of the community colleges in California is very, very diverse. Uh, we have, uh, you know, students from all lives uh, coming into us. Uh, the community is supporting us very well. I am very appreciative of that. We have a lot of good students. I was very uh, surprised when I got there. We have so many good students. And of course, uh, we have issues with uh, diversity. Uh, I think we all see that women and the minority in computer science. Some of it is because of us in computer science that we're putting some uh, kind of a, a door for people not to come to us. And for those who come in, of course, they're going to be good and successful and all those things. We do have a big population of homeless people, homeless students, and we are uh, going through it. Uh, we had the students who are going to a doctor program while uh, they were homeless in our college. So we have all kind of a range of people in our uh, school. We are trying to tap into more of a, a diversity than what we have in computer science. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of these things. Uh, let me go up, let me go up. And then I go down. OK, I guess that's not working. Mm. So what we are trying to do is we are trying to get uh, data science in uh, PCC. And it started when the University of UC San Diego asked us about some courses that, that uh, you know they need. So what uh, we are uh, basically like any other uh, community college, we have three kind of roles. Uh, the transfer students, that is our main work in computer science department. Then uh, we are working on the program and certificate. Um, and then, of course, we have a special interest. Uh, so we have uh, people that uh, they want to just take a class or two in community college. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that we can provide some uh, planning for them. They have a degree on something and they want to get into the data science. They just want to take a class or two to get familiar with it. And of course, we want to use this as a tool, the data aid type of thing, to bring more people interested in uh, data science, computer science, or any kind of a STEM uh, field. Uh, so, I have been working on the certificate uh, that I'm, uh, I'm working on. Okay, what, what do we need if I want to have a certificate for us? That's one of the things that we can start uh, talking about it. I would definitely like to have some kind of a standard certification for community colleges if it's possible. I am basing this based on the request of UCSD of the courses they expect us to have. So they basically requested these courses to go to, for our students to transfer to UCSD. Of course, database uh, and machine learning, I don't know how much of that is going to be uh, 
uh, doable in uh, uh, our college. Or uh, you know, like just thinking about what kind of a certificate we can have, and then. Uh, So we have the expectation of, you know, what uh, what we do, where we're going with these things. More, a lot of the students in computer science, they transfer into UCs. Their favorite uh, colleges uh, are uh, Berkeley, UCSD, and they go to a lot of UCs. Cal Poly is another favorite of our students. Our local uh, university is Cal State LA. Uh, so that's where we are with them. I didn't find that much in CSUs, which we talked about it. So one of the concerns that I have is basically what kind of a training are we talking about for us to get in? So we see that database, the data science is explores, exploding, and we all gonna we have a lot of people who want to get into it. So one of the things that I would like to kind of look at is what kind of a short term and long term plan do we have? for doing this. So we have people coming in from math department, computer science department, from different departments that they don't know some of these things. So my ideal situation would be a, I don't know, one year type of thing that you focus on this certificate degree, doctorate degree, whatever it is, to get the data science done. Of course, if we just want to get, uh, I'm, I'm copying this from the you know, document that uh, you guys sent it to us, that there's a very good uh, detailed stuff that what's available right now. And the focus is in data eight, which is wonderful. And I'm definitely going to be using all of these things that it is in this document, plus the ones that I have been learning all the way through. Uh, so that's basically I want to talk about. Of course, our articulation is what uh, we create courses. We give it to our uh, local CNI. They go over it. They, if we have some issues, we're going to go over it. Then we have to go through the meeting uh, with the uh, other faculties to be sure we are not overstepping somebody else. They send it to the chancellor office. They may or may not uh, reject it, and then we go from there. Another thing that I want to see that happens is just like other courses, that, that they are coming with some kind of a standard for the state of California, that we have CID for all other courses. We do not have any CID for the data science, and that's basically going toward standardizing what is the intro to uh, data science, because one of the biggest problems we have with community college is we offer a course, and this course is acceptable in UC Berkeley, but it's not acceptable in UC San Diego. Then we offer another course for UC San Diego, then it's not acceptable in UCLA. So if our students take all of these courses, then they cannot go to this one or versus the other one. And of course, they don't know where they can be admitted or you know, they want to have their doors open. So I'm hoping that one day we can go toward that standard of what is a data science course? What is this one? What is that one? And come up with some kind of a CID. That's basically what I want to talk about. Thank you. That's that's very helpful. Um, what, would anyone like to ask a uh, clarifying question? If you do, please type it in the chat. Open up your chat and uh, and we can read it or call on you. Give it a second. What do you think ML will look like at a two-year college? That's a big question. <laughs> what, do, well, you have to, do you want to take yeah. a stab at answering it? Well, for me, of course, I have to find my limit of where we're going, what we're doing. And most of the courses that we're going to be offering, it has twofold. One, to attract the students. Two is how much we can do with this. So, of course, if we have, of course, it has to be transferable. So it's going to be introduction to ML. It's not going to be a fully ML course, but it's something to get the students because they hear these things, machine learning. Okay, what is machine learning? What can we do with it? And can we create a project on this? Can we create a course introduction to machine learning that is going to require some extra uh, math classes in it? So it all depends on our first focus would it be is this a transferable to a UC and Cal State? The second one is, is this something that the industry is requesting uh, 
for students to have it for a certificate. So, and then we have to define the detail of it, how is it going to be worked out? Okay, thank you. Before we go, I see there's another question, but um, I want to hold the rest of the questions till after. And I'd now like to ask Professor Fuchs to um, give a, her presentation. Can you see my screen? Yes. OK, great. So um, so hi, everyone. I'm um, my name is Ekaterina Fuchs. I actually go by Katya. Um, so I'm Katya Fuchs and I'm the chair of the math department at City College of San Francisco. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about what where we are, I guess, in our journey to introducing uh, data aid and data science at City College of San Francisco. Um, so a little bit of background. Um, last summer, in summer 2019, our uh, computer science department got a chance to participate in uh, a workshop similar to this one, um, teaching data science in the community colleges specifically. And um, it was, um, my understanding is that it was run by UC Berkeley. And um, after we found out that that's something that took place, we formed a collaboration between the math and computer science departments. We made a joint committee to talk about what we could do to bring data science to City College. Um, so that committee was formed in fall of 2019 and we started break, break, brainstorming and kind of coming up with ideas. Um, in the spring of 2020, we were able to launch a little bit of a pilot where we had a group of faculty from both the math and the computer science department uh, take or otherwise participate in uh, data eight. So uh, we had uh, two math faculty, one of whom took the course and one of whom sort of audited slash participated in it and one computer science faculty. Uh, we were able to secure some funding to um, help with this. It wasn't perfect, but we were able to secure some funding through Strong Workforce um, to pay the tuition of uh, the faculty member who actually enrolled in and took the course from the math department. Uh, so the next step for us is developing a course and what is that going to sort of look like? So, of course, we need to develop a course outline and um, the course outline of record, the COR. And realistically, uh, we need to train faculty. Um, when we all got our master's degrees or our PhDs, data science was really not something a lot of us studied. Um, I can tell you with certainty that at least in the mathematics department, we don't have anybody who has a, a, a rigorous background of an advanced degree in data science. And so there has to be a certain amount of training of faculty. Uh, we also have professional tutoring staff. So we call them lab aides, they're classified tutors. Um, and we actually are able to embed them in many of our classes. And we've done rigorous training with them when they are embedded in certain classes to make sure that they're able to serve the students and address their needs. And so we would want to be able to embed these tutors into this course that we're trying to develop. And so training them would also be important. Um, any such training, um, the goal would be to have it be paid. So faculty would be paid to go through this professional development and the professional tutoring staff would also be paid to go through this training. Um, given constraints of scheduling having to do with curriculum, um, it's, un it's, it's unreasonable to think that we would be able to pilot this course before fall 2021. So that leaves us a year uh, to kind of figure things out and get a pilot going. And I'll say more about that in a couple of slides. Um, so one of the first questions that came up when we were discussing the course outline of record um, is prerequisites and advisories. Uh, so who are the students that are going to be allowed to take this course? So I have I, I could go off on quite a tangent here, but I'll keep it very brief. Um, we're operating under this new law that was passed in 2017 called AB 705, which um, 
very, very drastically changed uh, the way that placement works in community colleges. Um, CSUs had a similar executive order that I don't remember the exact name of. Um, so one of the ways that we um, have seen a change in our placement process is that even though, like, for example, statistics still has an Algebra 2 prerequisite, um, we are now allowing for uh, high school work to, um, to satisfy that prerequisite. So um, we decided that the prerequisite for um, this data science course that we are in the process of making would be analogous to the placement that we have for statistics. So again, there is a lot to say here, but I'll keep it brief. Uh, we offer uh, statistics with a co-requisite support course. So if students took intermediate algebra, but their high school GPA overall was not very high, they're required to take statistics with a co-requisite support. It's the lowest math placement. And so uh, we decided that if a student placed into statistics with co-requisite support, uh, they would also be eligible to take this uh, data science course. A bigger question that we are only just starting to scratch the surface of is course articulation. So, um, of course, we would want this to be a course that would transfer over to four year schools, um, both the UCs and the CSUs, but also other four year schools. Um, located in San Francisco, of course, um, the four year institutions that our students transfer to most frequently are um, the Cal California State University, specifically San Francisco and San Jose, um, and um, the UCs. So, of course, UC Berkeley is right there. Um, UC Davis is not far away. So, um, of course, we would want to make sure that we articulate with both the CSU and the UC system to make this course worthwhile for students. Um, so, those are some preliminary questions that came up in the writing of the course outline of record. So next is this issue of training faculty. So um, again, we've had a number of faculty who have participated in data eight in one form or another. So um, of course they will play, hopefully, I, I hope, um, an integral part in the training process. Uh, one of the things that we observed um, in going through the participating in the data eight course at UC Berkeley is that it's a course that's taught quite differently from the way that we teach, say, our statistics course, right? So it's this kind of extreme flipped classroom situation, a very hands-on approach where um, students are working with applications right away, they're writing code, they're running simulations, and um, this is something that is, is, is going to take some development and some training. And so that's also something that we're thinking ahead for doing in the coming semesters. Um, a big piece of this for us is, of course, the technology question. So uh, the way that the course is run at UC Berkeley, students log in via Jupyter notebooks, which requires a certain amount of cloud computing. And um, it takes certain resources that City College and I, I would guess many community colleges would have a hard time shouldering the cost. So what we have, uh, what we have decided for now and perhaps indefinitely is that we would be using the Google collaboratory um, platform and um, there are certain there are certain pros and cons to making this decision um, of course it's it's free to students um, it's not the most seamless platform to access necessarily but it does um, seamlessly or at least relatively seamlessly uh, back up with Canvas, so that's helpful since the learning management system that we use at City College is Canvas. Um, of course, the an, a possible problem would be that as Google makes changes uh, to its platform, we would have to kind of learn them and be able to adapt with them. Uh, but the fact that it is uh, no additional cost to us or to our students is a big problem. So, um, what happens next? So, uh, like I said, we got strong workforce funding uh, to pay for some of our faculty to participate in this data eight course. And so, of course, um, the, the the big question that came next is resources to continue this to make sure that this kept going. 
So like I said before, um, the goal is to have this fall 2021 pilot uh, where we run three sections of Math 108. Uh, so Math 108 is what we are tentatively calling this course. It's Foundations of Data Science and uh, three sections because we thought that's how many faculty and professional tutors we could reasonably aim to get trained and ready to go in fall 20 by fall 2021. And when I say section, um, we're talking 35 students. So the, the, the sections that we offer in math are generally a 35 person cap. If it's an online class, that cap goes up to 40. So we're talking about about 100 students here going through this for the first time in fall of 2021. Uh, longer term goals. So there's sort of tiers of goals here. So um, we uh, the goal that I the best way that I can say it is really thinking about this course math 108 being braided into the fabric of what City College offers, um, not to have it be a course that we offer a section or two every other semester, but really have it become a bread and butter course. So I wrote here something that I have since realized is perhaps like a, a radical statement, and I'm, I maybe didn't mean it to be quite this radical, but uh, Math 108 as replacement for statistics is the default quote first math class for the majority of incoming students. So what I meant by this is that currently our statistics class, Math 80, um, is a course in which we offer nearly triple the number of sections um, than any other course that we run. Um, the, the majority of students who come to City College for the first time and they need a math class to graduate and transfer to a four-year institution um, will take statistics. And there are some other issues with that that I will touch on a little bit later. Um, so what I would really love to see is for uh, Math 108 or this Foundation of Data Science course to really become sort of the bread and butter course, the course that the vast majority of incoming students take as their math class. There are big hurdles here. There are uh, CID issues, making sure that Math 108 has a CID that would allow it to meet the quantitative reasoning requirement for majors the way that statistics does. And this, that's a big long-term hurdle to jump over. Uh, but since we're talking about dreams, I thought I would mention it here. Um, we do have a little bit of um, a data science program sort of available at City College already. So in spring 2019, the computer science department launched a Fundamentals of Data Science certificate. So it's not an associate's degree, but it is a certificate. And um, there I just copy pasted directly from our website kind of what students expect to um, come out of this certificate having learn. So the certificate will provide an introduction to data science and technical computing skills. Students will learn the basics of working in a Unix or Linux environment, basic programming techniques using Python database fundamentals, including SQL, uh, data visualization techniques and statistics. So currently the, the certificate has a statistics math component, I guess we could say, and students can uh, satisfy that piece um, using our statistics class, Math 80, or even statistics classes that we offer through other departments. For example, we offer Psychology 5 um, in the um, psychology department, and that is uh, statistics with sort of a behavioral science bend to it. And students can use Psych 5 to satisfy the requirement in the certificate as it currently stands. So once we launch Math 108, the goal would be for that to be the math course that students take to achieve the certificate. Um, we do not currently have, but we would like to work towards an associate's degree in data science. So at UC Berkeley, there's Data 100, uh, Principles and Techniques of Data Science. Um, however, unlike Data 8 or Math 108, as it would be called at City College, um, Data 100 has a pretty um, robust mathematics prerequisite. Um, it has a Math 54 prerequisite at UC Berkeley, which um, is linear algebra and differential equations. That would translate to Math 130 at City College of San Francisco, and students who take that class have to go through the entire calculus sequence to get there. So 
because subsequent data science study requires a deeper knowledge of mathematics, um, we might consider developing or re-engineering mathematics curriculum with a data science mindset, um, perhaps with the goal of getting students quote unquote data 100 ready in three semesters. So currently between the calculus sequence and the uh, linear algebra differential equations course at City College, um, depending on how you count semesters, it's a minimum of four semesters. If you also include the pre-calculus that students take, that's an additional fifth semester. So the goal would be to try to, to reimagine this uh, path in a way that students could go through it in three semesters time. So that would be another kind of big goal and a big undertaking. So um, why this matters? Uh, so for, for me, one of the big kind of questions that I have been grappling with um, for a couple of years now, but really much longer, it was all put into the forefront for me when um, AB705 kind of roared onto the scene in 2017, um, is the question of equity in, in the STEM fields. Um, uh, for us at City College, like I said earlier, Statistics Math 80 is the course into which it's kind of the default math class. Um, the majority of our new students go into that class. And on its face, that's great. Statistics is important. But unfortunately, statistics does not satisfy any prerequisites for any STEM fields. And it's a dead end course, um, meaning that if a student were to find themselves suddenly interested in learning more mathematics or going into a more STEM oriented track, they have to go backwards. They have to essentially go back to the drawing board. And even though it's not true, we know it's not true as teachers, in their minds, they feel like they've wasted a semester. So there's a tremendous amount of, of, of tracking away from STEM that goes on, whether we know it or not, when students go into statistics, math 80, as their first math class. So in thinking about this new data science course, we were really thinking about how do we make it so that there's a course that's immediately relevant, immediately interesting, and immediately accessible to all students, regardless of their past mathematical experience, but it also gives them an avenue that they can seamlessly go down that would take them into uh, a STEM path so a few ways in which that in which we're thinking about this is um, using OER course materials, open educational resources. So avoiding high cost textbooks and things like this, um, using open source technologies in the form of Google Colab, developing new degrees and new certificate programs, and ultimately um, doing all of this with the thinking of like getting our students access to um, high quality jobs. So really kind of looking at the data market, uh, excuse me, at the job market and thinking about where are those new careers and those new opportunities and making sure that we're really keeping our finger on the pulse of that. And then, of course, the big question, money, 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 right? Paid training programs, paid professional development. Um, so currently, we uh, wrote a grant, the mathematics department wrote a grant in, um, uh, in spring of 2020 uh, through the Strong Workforce Program to fund this initial pilot launching process. So training the initial group of faculty, uh, training the initial group of professional tutors, and we were approved. Now, of course, you'll hear the question mark at the end of my voice there. Um, the Strong Workforce Program has been just decimated by the most recent budget um, uh, revise. We've been told that these cuts will affect the next academic year, that the funding for the programs that were approved this time around should still be intact. But that was an informal thing that someone told us. It wasn't an official, here's your money letter. So we are sort of waiting with bated breath to see what comes of that funding that we applied for and were approved for, but haven't formally been awarded yet. So that's all that I have kind of thinking ahead. So thank you very much for your time. And if you'd like to contact me, I've included my email at the end there. 
Thank you very much, Katya. You've, you've raised a lot of good issues, and I'm hoping that in our discussion after we hear all four speakers that we'll have a chance to touch back on, on many of them. Um, next up is uh, Professor Kearney. Hello, everyone. Let me share my screen. So um, my talk will be um, uh, fairly brief. Um, uh, this talk is about data science at Clovis Community College. We're um, uh, in Fresno, technically not Clovis, which is the neighboring city. It's a very badly named college, I guess. Um, it's a, a very diverse college. Uh, we're 41% Hispanic, 38% white. And um, uh, the previous speaker was just talking about equity, and it's, it's a really big issue for us as well. Um, our, our computer science program um, has been you know, really working hard to uh, um, look at uh, the outcomes of different equity groups. And um, it's, it's, been, it's been something that we're, we're really interested in, especially from the perspective of, of data science, opening up, um, I think, uh, sort of the world to a lot more uh, careers. Uh, I, I've been going through your, uh, your video lectures from Monday. And it's very interesting to see all the different majors and backgrounds that are participating in your data science program. And that, that really, you know, speaks to me and I think to, you know, probably other people at the college as well. So uh, let me tell you about uh, what data science is like at Columbus Community College. Uh, we don't have one, so uh, that's my talk. Uh, <laughs> thank you all for coming. Uh, I appreciate it. You've been a great audience. Uh, <laughs> No, but uh, we're, we're interested in building a, a, a data science program here. And uh, so uh, Xenia asked me to speak about um, some of the obstacles that might come uh, to, to building out a program. So my, my talk is going to be a little bit different from the other two speakers who already have uh, programs in the works. Um, and so my audience here isn't um, uh, them, but uh, perhaps uh, people people at UCs. Um, it's, it's sort of a, a different world. I, I myself went to UC San Diego and then uh, I'm teaching at a, at a community college. And so um, in order for us to build out a program, uh, there's, a, there's a process we go through with, with what's called a curriculum committee. And so in order to uh, kind of get things through a curriculum, uh, one of the things we have to do is demonstrate uh, the, uh, that UCs and CSUs are doing it. And so uh, they've already actually helped me with this. Um, there's a shared Google document over here and they've, they've actually listed what data science programs are already there in uh, here in California. Um, they've also provided a course with the syllabus and teaching materials and all that stuff, which uh, I will very happily steal and uh, and submit to the curriculum committee, which is very, very helpful. Um, I, I myself am a computer science person. I'm not a data science person, so um, I don't think that I'd be qualified to design a program like this myself. Uh, and so having all of these materials that you guys have put up on on GitHub and on various other places is amazingly, amazingly helpful. And I, I really thank you guys for that. So uh, things that would help us uh, uh, through building out a data science uh, program at a college that doesn't have one is uh, if it got added to what's called the CID system. The, both of the previous speakers talked about it, but um, let me see if I can uh, share that screen over here, let's see, there we go. And so the, the CID program, for those of you that haven't seen it, um, this is more of a community college and uh, CSU uh, program here. Uh, the UCs uh, don't really use it. What it is, is every kind of class that we teach gets coded. Uh, this is CID 122. And what it, what it means is that if I teach a class that's coded to CID 122, that any California State University that also has a class that's coded to CID 122 will articulate with it um, more or less automatically. And so there's a sample syllabus and there's topics and learning outcomes. And uh, a lot of this is derived from other sources like this is from the ACM's sample uh, model computing machinery uh, model, uh, sorry, ACM model computing um, curriculum. And uh, it just makes it makes articulation really, really nice because one of the biggest issues that I've had to deal with as a instructor at a community college is that my students go to UC 
and then they find out that they have to repeat their freshman year and that's devastating i mean um i i had students who took two years of computer science with me and they went to irvine irvine's not a cheap city to live in and they go there and they're and they they take second semester third semester and fourth semester computer science but not first semester and so they have to like they have to retake the first semester and so they're paying tuition a lot of money and they're paying a lot of rent and they're having to retake a class that they've already passed and it like it, it just it just baffles the mind and so uh what would be really nice would be uh, first of all having data science added to the to the cid system to do articulation with the csus uh switch this back over here uh but it would uh it'd, it'd be also really nice if um if the if the ucs themselves like um uh the, the one of the previous speakers was talking about how ucsd wanted one thing and ucla wanted one thing and, and berkeley had it had a different thing and, and that's something that i just deal with all, all the time and um and then they go there and they have to appeal and i have to like send in syllabus syllabi from three years ago and um uh, it's just um, it, it, it's rough on the students because they think they've they've passed something and then they go someplace and they find out they haven't passed it and they have to retake it again and it sort of wastes everybody's time. But at the same time, from the UC's perspective, uh, a lot of times they want to make sure that the students coming into the program are meeting up to their standards. So it's a it's a tough it's a tough it's a tough situation. And so um, the CID system again is only for really community colleges and, and, and CSUs. So. Uh, another thing that'd be really nice is if uh, data science played nicely with AB 705. I was hurriedly editing my my <laughs> slides as the previous speakers were talking, as as they were like hitting on the same points I was. I'm like, ah, I can't can't uh, you know have to give credit where credit's due, you know. Um, and so AB 705 is um, uh, the 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 rule is that students have to get into transfer level classes within a year of starting at a community college, and so that's with with tons and tons of exceptions. There's tons of asterisks attached to that. But basically what it means is we're no longer doing placement exams and we're no longer uh, having remedial classes. And so one thing that they've proposed is allowing stats to substitute for Algebra 2 um, as a uh, sort of an entry level math class. And it sounds like at a CCSF, CCSF um, that that stats is sort of the, the gateway. Um, I, I'm not familiar with the college, but just from what she was talking about. Uh, it sounds like um, that's that's kind of how it is. Um, and so having data science sort of because um, uh, I, I, I sort of assume that at, at Berkeley students are taking you know algebra two and, and, and whatnot. Um, and so having maybe the course be friendly to people that are sort of at that that tier of math would, I think, open it up to more students. And and like she was talking about with with the equity perspective, I, I think there's a real. Real opportunity for like big systemic change with with data science. Um, and then, yeah, our articulation is, is problematic. Um, I was at early his name as well. Um, and so if if it would be possible, like for like UCLA and and Berkeley and, and San Diego to, to get together and sort of have a core idea of what they want to see from a, uh, a data uh, science eight or whatever the equivalent number is at, uh, at other UCs, then it would make our life easier as community college people, because then we could just target the common set of requirements, and then ideally, hopefully, cross fingers, it would articulate with everybody, and everyone wins. You know, the students win, UCs win, because they get students coming in that have met the prerequisites, and everyone's happy. Um, maybe it's a pipe. I don't know, but uh, that's that's kind of what what I think would be be really nice to see. And um, if the infrastructure would be easier to clone, um, I know you guys have done um, a a lot of work on this. Um, so this this is this is not um, that wasn't me, I promise. That was uh, me, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, the, uh, uh, the this is a, this is a faint criticism because um, I've gone through the uh, zero to uh, data eight uh, site and I've, I've looked at all the work you guys have done to make it easy to clone. Um, uh, so um, it's just my own personal failing. I spent like five minutes trying to get it to work and it didn't work. And then I, I gave up because it's, it's some time and I'm lazy. Um, so it's, it's really, it's really faint criticism, but, uh, if, if there would be, uh, some, some ability for us to, um, either share the infrastructure and that might have to involve some sort of funding agreement or something like that to pay for the, 
the data and stuff like that, where uh, we could just sort of hop on and students could just start taking the class. That'd be amazing. Um, or if not, um, just easier ways of, of cloning it. And and again, I know you guys have done a lot of work on it, so I really don't want to sound ungrateful because it's amazing what you guys have been doing, and I'm so grateful for it. So um, that's it. That's it for me. Um, I, I, uh, I'm i sorry. I don't I don't have a program to describe, but. Oh, that's absolutely fine. I think it's um, it's good to hear that across the three speakers so far, there's a lot of common issues and concerns because that way maybe we can uh, figure out steps forward. Um, our next speaker is Professor Russell. Thank you. Hello. Hello, everybody. I'm going to share my slides. There we go. Um, so I've given two talks already. Um, so if you've uh, seen in either of those, uh, you're going to see a lot of um, recurring material. Um, but I'll move through it quickly and kind of uh, park on some uh, issues that I think are particularly of interest uh, to community colleges. So um, my name is Solomon Russell. I'm from El Camino College. Uh, we are here in Los Angeles. Um, we are a two-year community college. Uh, we serve a diverse community from Manhattan Beach to Inglewood. So um, we have diversity in terms of uh, geography, but also of experience and ethnicity. Um, we have, uh, I am housed in the mathematics department. I'm sorry, the mathematics division. I am a professor of computer science. Um, and there are three departments in the math uh, division. And as uh, has been spoken already, we are living in a new world in the division with AB705, which doesn't affect computer science as much, um, but uh, definitely, well, not as much as math, but it affects all of us. So uh, why Berkeley's curriculum? So in 2017, we started teaching uh, Cal CS10 class, which is the beauty of computer science principles. Um, I'm sorry, the beauty and joy of uh, computing. The class we started teaching is the beauty of computer science principles. That's what we named it. Um, the reason why we picked that curriculum is because it's program heavy. Um, and we looked at our class as potentially being a way of getting more uh, underrepresented groups into computer science because as people have talked about already, um, we have equity issues that are uh, systemic really to computer science. Uh, there were abundance of resources. Um, the curriculum had a high ceiling and a low floor. And uh, the uh, Cal 10, uh, CS 10 um, course has been replicated at high schools uh, to some degree as the AP Computer Science Principles class um, that has been created by the College Board uh, and NSF over the last few years. So uh, what we learned teaching a Cal class, which kind of influenced uh, a lot of the thoughts that we have as we uh, start our data science experience is that uh, we're okay with going slow. Um, so we, we kind of, um, or I, we realized that, um, that what was covered in a Berkeley class over uh, three weeks uh, would sometimes take a lot longer, maybe twice or uh, three times as long, um, especially with the class uh, that had a very low prerequisite for that um, uh, CS10 class, we had a prerequisite of just basic algebra, math 40 for us. Um, we had to focus more on problem solving um, and uh, we had to give smaller projects and problems for students to work on instead of uh, the bigger projects, um, which required more work and especially without having uh, TAs. Um, that made it a little bit more wieldy. Uh, I should say that in our computer science program, uh, we actually have uh, uh, labs and lectures. Not all community college ha colleges have that. So we do have a lecture component and lab component um, uh, associated with our classes. So what uh, else brought us to data science? Um, so. Um, through CS10, um, learning about that, and then conversations I've had with uh, an NSF program officer, um, I really heard about like data science and, and how it was something that we needed to, and that everybody was pretty much adopting to some degree. Uh, so without really knowing what it was, uh, I had a, a brown bag for math faculties with another professor, uh, Alice Martinez, um, who I partnered with in math. So when I first uh, uh, sent out a, uh, a kind of request to help me because um, like the previous speaker talked about, it's been a long time since I've done any kind of statistics. I'm a computer scientist. So having that person to rely on was really useful. Um, then the following semester, we actually had a breakout session. Um, and then we had it with a student who wound up going up to Berkeley um, 
because he wanted to take data science. And he had looked at half a dozen community colleges in the LA area and he couldn't find what he wanted. Um, so he came back and talked about his, his experience. Um, and um, after just giving the very basic visualization that's given in uh, 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 data eight, um, I was able to get really great responses from the faculty members and also the, um, the students that were in the presentation. Uh, one decided to go to Berkeley uh, over UCLA, which kind of hurt my heart since I went to UCLA um, be, because of that presentation. So I did too good of a job. Um, so where we are now, um, so we passed uh, through our college curriculum committee, um, our version of CS, of, I'm sorry, of data eight. Um, it's going to be housed at least initially in the computer science department. Um, we found especially at our school in our division, that that would be an easier uh, way of entry to getting it um, um, on the books at our college. And unbeknownst to me, when I first started working on data science, uh, there was already uh, works um, at the college. A uh, communications professor had already written up uh, data-driven persuasion, and he had done okay. that uh, the year before. So um, this fall, we actually are going to be able to teach um, both of those classes, although we will not be teaching CS8, um, our version of data science, just because I didn't want to teach it the first time uh, online, even though it looks like it might have to happen that way in spring 2011. Um, and um, I will most likely be teaching it with uh, Alice Martinez from the math division. So uh, we hope to have uh, a collaborative uh, teaching experience. And we've gotten really great um, feedback from our local CSUs like Cal State Dominguez Hills, which also offers um, some type of analytics program and uh, companies uh, that are on our advisory board. So what I put together just uh, a few weeks ago, because I found it was um, easier to talk to people in the college and easier for me to think about it uh, when we had kind of like a roadmap um, of where we are, um, what milestones that we might want to hit. Um, over the next couple of years as we develop out our data science plan and also a look of what what's happening in the area in the LA area in terms of uh, community colleges even high schools there's a high school a mile away from us that actually teaches intro to data science that's a curriculum out of uh, UCLA Center X um, that's uh, a module basically a module inside of their algebra 2 class and looking at the universities from UCLA uh, just starting to offer a data theory class in their statistics um, department and uh, the for-profit companies uh, that are around so uh, one thing that really shapes our view and of uh, data science as we look to institute at El Camino is the experience of that student that actually was on um, listed on that talk that we gave. Uh, the one that walked, uh, that contacted half a dozen community colleges and not just didn't get the information that he uh, wanted, actually got some disinformation. Um, so there was really, it was eye opening to me that um, the place where students first go in order to get information um, was not able to give them the information that uh, they needed. Um, this is a student who, uh, like I said before, um, uh, wound up having to go to, uh, to UC Berkeley uh, in order to take data eight. And really has been a resource as we started to think about like, um, how does how will this look in uh, a community college based on his experience of taking community college classes and then going to Berkeley and, and being able to tell us really useful information like um, the students that he had, like he had a, a statistics background and he saw that the students that didn't, um, there was a, a little bit of a struggle. So that really shapes our, our viewpoint, especially as we uh, think of offering this class um, in the back of our minds and back of my mind is uh, whether this looks like um, we may have to offer a support class like we do for a lot of the uh, changes that we made to the math department uh, with because of AB 705. So where are we going? Um, we would like to have the possibility of, uh, of having a certificate or an associate's degree. Um, I hope to have a discussion about that where people are, and I'm glad to see uh, on a previous speaker uh, uh, tell me that there's already, uh, at least in their computer science department, a certificate. Um, we're already thinking about um, uh, the next course after data eight. Um, 
Uh, Data 100 is a upper division class, which um, really isn't the purview of uh, the computer science department, at least you know at El Camino College. Um, but there may be a lot of uh, ground between D uh, Data 8 and uh, Data 100, something that doesn't have like the calculus, the full calculus requirement, um, but something that prepares students and being able to formalize that as other people have talked about. Um, we are, um, we, we just got funded for a grant with uh, Berkeley and Cal State Long Beach um, through the uh, California uh, Learning Lab. And uh, I'm working with, uh, Berkeley's the lead uh, 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 institution, and I'm working with uh, Dan Garcia and Armando Fox uh, to produce uh, paradigm-based questions. Um, those are going to be uh, uh, with the idea of creating them for Python, but especially after this this conference, um, I'm thinking that I really want to instigate, uh, investigate how that might look for uh, some of the non-Python related material in Data 8. So especially as I start to learn and prepare for the class, having that in mind and maybe writing some paradigm generated questions for that class uh, will be a good exercise. So where we are, um, uh, we are also need to think about where this is ultimately going to live, if it's going to be cross-listed um, and how it spreads across campus. Um, and finally, like I said before, we are um, thinking of teaching this in spring 2021. Um, we'll probably have two sections of it. That's a lab lecture lab with about 44 students. Um, and for the infrastructure that we're looking at is uh, the littlest Jupiter, Jupiter Hub um, configuration where we just have our, our local IT provide us with the server. And at least initially with uh, that small of number of students um, that will be uh, what we use and then as we expand we'll definitely need to investigate other um, infrastructure issues and that's my contact information and great and that's my presentation thank you solomon um uh we uh we have about half an hour left um to open up the conversation a little more uh, well, if people could uh, type in that they would like to ask a question in the chat. And um, in a minute, I'm going to ask Ani Adhikari to, to respond to some of the things that you all have talked about. She's one of the, uh, she's one of the creators of Data8. But bef right before then, it seems like one piece that is something that we could par possibly partner on is this issue of articulation and the CID. And one person in the chat has already asked, how long does it take to get a course listed in CID? And another much harder problem I see is the coordination across the UCs and the CSUs to actually have something that would be part of a CID. But um, that could be, uh, I could see that as a project that we could take on. Um, I wonder if any of you want to um, help us a little bit understand in terms of the length of time if you already knew what you were doing as opposed to before we all agreed on a particular curriculum. Is that a, a long process, a short process? Is any, any one of you can? As far as, as far as I understand it, I mean, I'm, I don't know the detail of it, is uh, a lot of these things are coming from ACM. They have a kind of a, uh, overview of the course, uh, but they are, are off them. They go and uh, request one, and then they're going to have a committee that they're going to be working on it. So they have one that they are all, they are working on it, and then after a while they're going to vote on it and they're going to approve it. So it's just a it's a process. It's not going to happen in a day or two. It's going to be a long process. But the first one is we have to submit the request, then they're going to create a committee to go work on it. And then, of course, they're going to have some requirement on it and then they're going to get to approval. We got to start that. I think that's a good start for all of us. So we have a schedule posted on our curriculum committee website and basically right now it's coming up on too late to have anything come through the committee that would run in spring 2021. So it's about a year from the time that you, and, and this seems like a fairly standard timeline, mm -hmm. about a year from when you first write the outline and get it into the pipeline to where it's approved and you can run the course. Got it. Yeah. Thanks. Um, Ani, are you out there? It's a little hard to tell. <laughs> Would you like to 
Same. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Uh, so, uh, what is your focus? What should I be? Oh, I would just to just respond to anything that I heard. Yeah, especially. I mean, there's been a lot of discussion about Data Eight, and you're the creator of Data Eight. I would just wondered if there's anything in particular that you'd like to add to the conversation about, you know, expansion to the community colleges. So uh, I have a couple of. Uh, It's not really uh, some background, uh, which is partly personal from the point of view of the developers, and also some experience from Google having offered a version of Data 8 in small colleges uh, that I'll just throw out and, you know, uh, for people to uh, uh, throw into the mix. Uh, so one thing to keep in mind is I believe that all three of the Data 8 uh, initial instructors, David Wagner, John De Niro, and myself, I think all three of us have UC Berkeley PhDs. And all three of us have, at different times of our lives, been associated with well-known private universities. But all three of us came back to teach at Berkeley. And so the mission of the public university has been uppermost in our mind from the beginning. And that's one of the reasons it's all free and open. Right? Uh, so at some point, I think it was about two years ago, Google came to us saying, we want to teach data eight in small colleges where computer science is not as big a part as it is at Berkeley. And so we'd like to use data eight uh, as uh, one of the first courses. Uh, and they offered to help us record the videos. They said, it's wonderful you have these textbooks, you have the, the labs, but we'd like the lectures. Um, and we didn't want to give them our you know, recorded classroom lectures. So that was great. I mean, we said, OK, we'll do this work. We'll record these lectures. And Google wanted to use it for their, uh, uh, their program that they were developing. And we knew also that they could then, the same videos could be used for the uh, edX uh, course that goes out to everybody. But that is not why we did it. That was for us. Mm the way to get Google to support us making these videos. Um, because we had in mind the community colleges. We felt that if we create video of the lectures, then the community college faculty member has that as a resource. And they can choose to offer the class in multiple different ways. You know, they can actually teach some of it. They can ask students to watch some of it on video. They can do a flipped classroom. They can do a at least they have that resource. Because we were acutely aware, having taught it ourselves, that it's actually a hard class to teach. A lot of you have said, you know, I'm a computer scientist, I don't have this background. I had to work with somebody else, right? We had to do that. And we have to do it over and over again, right? And so we wanted to create a set of materials that it doesn't become an albatross around somebody's neck. That you've developed this course, now teach it for the rest of your life. Right. Multiple people have to be able to teach this thing. So we were conscious. I mean, that was the reason for us to make the videos. And I just want the community college faculty to be just to be aware of that and to know that we will work with you in whatever way we can to make these things doable. One of the ways that I can work with you is that as a member of the statistics department undergraduate committee, I often had to work on articulation of various courses with our statistics courses. And we actually had a pretty clear set of criteria for what is equivalent to data eight. And so at some point we could discuss that, right? To have some kind of common set so that you understand, right? If my course satisfies A, B, C, and D, then yes, it covers data eight. And, up and around those parameters, I can do what I want. Um, so that's something we can offer. Um, the, uh, let me see. Yeah, so somebody, I think it was Solomon, who said, uh, you know, we had to be okay with going a little slower. And so the data from the Google program, when they offered data eight elsewhere, was uh, it reminded us that data eight is packed. Right? There's not a fallow moment in lecture, even in Berkeley. It's 15 weeks where it's just coming at people, bang, 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 bang. And the faculty teaching Google's program had trouble, right? Even though, I mean, they had support, they had a lot, 
to, to have their students absorb all of that was difficult. When we've offered uh, data eight, well, when other universities have offered versions of data eight at four year universities, which have a quarter system, right? There has been this, what should I teach? What should I not teach? Right, so I think one thing we could all do as faculty is develop pathways through data eight. Right, here is something cogent that would hang together if you have this kind of student. Yeah, here is something else that is cogent that would hang together. Here is a way to do it in two quarters. Right, so you take 20 weeks instead of 15. I mean, all of those things, uh, we would be happy. And we've talked with many of our uh, colleagues at four year universities who have offered this class, but we have not worked with community college faculty. And I think uh, many of us would be very open to doing that. We don't know your needs well, but if you tell us your needs, we are so deeply into the data eight materials and why we made the decisions we made that we can quickly say, we did this because we thought we were going to run up against this obstacle, or we don't want to do this because we hit this barrier, then uh, it might be a little easier for you. So. I actually, uh, what should I say, barged in on this panel. I was not a member of this panel. Somebody, Lara, wrote uh, uh, asking about something to do with uh, our students working with you. And I wrote to Eric saying, um, can I show up? So very kindly, they let me barge in. But my reason for joining this panel was to say, look, we're here, we're your colleagues. And we would like to work with you but you have to tell us what to do. Basically, you lead. And then we'll follow. Is that okay? So, Deb, that's my... Thank you. That's what I got. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do, do any of the panelists want to respond? Or I, I have another question to go on to. Are we good? I just want to say uh, thank you very much for that. It's amazing. Thanks, Annie. Um, another uh, thing that seemed common across all of your situations, slightly different, but common was the uh, idea of infrastructure and how do I set this up so that my students can, you know, can access Jupyter Notebooks and some kind of computing platform. And Eric Van Dusen, I'd like to ask him to so to talk a little bit about, we've been thinking about this, thinking about ways that maybe we could partner with the community colleges. And um, I'd like to ask him just to talk a little bit about, about it, about the various issues that we've had in the past um, as well. We've had lots of pain points too. And, and maybe there's a way for us to jointly come up with a, a you know, path forward. All right. Yeah, I'll say a few things. Um, first of all, uh, we, have been trying to like upgrade all the materials that are meant for the adopters. So we've been through like the zero to data eight guide. There's two new things to check out this year. One is like choosing your Jupyter Hub pathway that says like, you know, here's the here's like the collab version, the zero to data, uh, the littlest Jupyter Hub version, the Kubernetes version. So it sort of like outlines those pathways in a nice way. It's both in a video and a web page. Um, then we went through some of the commercial. There's like a slide deck and a video on like commercial providers that just sort of like discusses what some of the what's CoCalc doing and what's DeepNote doing. Um, so those are good guides just to run through and like get a get a grip around like what some of the choices would be. Um, second, uh, we have two big initiatives that are sort of coming off the ground right now. Um, one is this new one called 2i2c. That one has an idea of like, could we build a federated hub where there's like a nice portal that you sort of pull up and say, I am at community college, I need to teach this. And behind the scenes, there's somebody that's administrating the, the Kubernetes and you're just like launching your, your um, the idea there is like, if we could get some of the people that are our Jupyter Hub maintainers that have really figured out how to dial down the costs and how to scale efficiently, um, that potentially there's like economies of scale for launching another hub. Uh, and then, um, you know, we do have, um, 
you know, there's like the Microsoft team will be here tomorrow. They have like how to do it on Azure. They have like how to do it with VS Code online. They have to how to do it with Learn. Um, they're exploring. There's other commercial people that are coming tomorrow that will have uh, their, you know, Google and Deep Notes and uh, Vocarium. They're all worth checking out. Um, then finally, there's uh, this uh, project for Cloud Bank that we're also looking for partners where they will probably build up a hub and be offering like a hub to a community college type of partner. Um, potentially, you know, we will be looking for community college partners going forward to sort of try this out and be like our first testers. Um, so potentially the people on this call or, or elsewhere, uh, given that some of these are for spring 21 or fall 21, um, we, we should be able to have um, infrastructure in place for that. Um, one other one, though, is certainly, uh, so, you know, uh, Solomon and William, like, <coughs> Trying out the the zero the littlest Jupiter Hub and just like seeing if you can get it going is definitely like you know a worthy behind the scenes just trying to figure it out like even for me just to 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 run through that guide and I last last year at this workshop we did a run through and UV taught us to do our littlest Jupiter Hub and even if I don't use that one for teaching that much, I still like, I got a grasp on like what it's doing behind the scenes and it was helpful. Um, we can, um, we could potentially, um, you know, run that workshop again. That's just sort of like, you know, how to get online. Uh, you know, last year with like Microsoft as a sponsor, they were here and they're like, here, have some credits to run it. So, you know, you could like get some free credits to run it. So it's just the exercise of, of the time of setting it up. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think, I think there's lots of places we, we have partners from Microsoft. Some of them are on this call that, you know, they would be interested in engaging, like some of it's like, the, like the last panel for California strategy, like, can we sort of like build a group of interest and some momentum across institutions and, and use that to, um, have some sort of community of practice moving forward around infrastructure as well. Great. So, um, Eric, there's a question in the chat which is related to what you just said. I think the answer is that the the information that you uh, were talking about is what Mingho asks. What would be helpful is something that they could take back to their IT at the community college to say this is my infrastructure needs. And I believe that's the document that you're talking about, but I just want to double check that that's the case. Yeah, there's a few. Uh, right now, if you go to data.berkeley.edu slash external, there's some guides for people uh, looking for their university and there's a tab for infrastructure and it will have like, you know, the four main things you could read to sort of be knowledgeable in this area. Um, and, uh, you know, the, as I said, it's called the Littlest Jupiter Hub. You can spawn it on free resources. You can get to know what's going on. Um, there's also guides to what the commercial resources might be as well. Um, so we have some sort of starting guides for for that. I can type that in the chat too. Thanks. So I'd like to um, I'd like to take a second to revisit something that both Katya and Solomon were talking about, which was the partnership that they were engaging between math, statistics, and computer science. And I need touched on this too. It's been a very, very, uh, I think, integral part of the success of data science on our campus has been the collaboration between the statisticians and the, and the computer scientists to the point where Data 8 and Data 100, we continue to co-teach it together where we have a statistician and a computer scientist. And I, I, I have um, two questions for you is one is, is there a, um, is there a co-teaching or um, model of some sort at the community colleges where, you know, when we're co-teaching, we're co-teaching a thousand students. And so it's really easy to justify, yep, you two can co-teach this because it's like you're each teaching 500 students. I don't know if you have similar but different. So for example, if you're running, I heard that um, in, in fall 2021, you want to have four sections of 35. Is there a way to sort of have a team of teachers, some coming from one discipline, some from another, 
does that sound like it would it would fit into your culture uh, at the at your community college and my second question is is there some additional way we could partner in terms of faculty training? I heard you, Katya, say that that you said it several times <laughs> that you would really like some kind of way to help faculty and get them trained. So um, I see Solomon and Katya are both about to say something. <laughs> okay, I, I guess I'll go first. Okay. So um, the idea of this like team of teachers is very much in ingrained in the culture of our department the partnership between math and computer science is new but um craig and sean are both on this in this in this in this meeting uh we are building a partnership and i hope that we can do this uh we have groups of teachers who teach the same class who meet and talk about pedagogy already it's already part of the culture of our department um i as far as faculty training in partnership with UC Berkeley, I would I would be absolutely thrilled to, to, to partner on that and to talk about ways to do that. I don't have a concrete thing in mind, but um, I'll let Solomon take over from here. Um, in terms of the team teaching at El Camino, that will be something that's completely new for us. Um, I'm not aware of many other courses that are team taught, although I suspect um, that it won't be so difficult. I mean, it's just a, a matter of uh, FTEs, uh, making sure that they uh, equate to the amount that they have to, right? Um, and uh, the culture, the, the combination of math and computer science, I think won't be such a foreign, it won't be a foreign thing for us because we actually have had in the past before we built up our computer science department, we've had math faculty that have taught some of our intro computer science uh, classes because there's been overlap of experience. So um, in that way, um, I think we will particularly have an easier go of it uh, maybe than uh, maybe uh, generally. Um, and the uh, last thing of professional development, I think that's something that we haven't formally talked about. Um, I do think um, we have gotten a lot of interest um, and a lot of excitement in the brief conversations that we've had with our faculty, especially in math. And I think uh, channeling that excitement into a, a professional development model um, where which really acknowledges that we're all still learners uh, i think that that has a very good uh, chance of being productive and in the models that i've seen that have worked um, that's worked and, and and i see me and alice martinez uh being the people that pilot that uh of being people that um, really make sure that that culture uh, continues i have i have a couple of things to say sure. uh, <clears throat> Yeah, uh, we, we tried that, that that one first of all because of the cost wise uh, having a two instructor for a course that didn't work. It was a discussion a few years ago that we would have parallel courses, let's say a static course and a computer course that they would be in parallel and then we can just merge them together. But it did not work for us. I mean, we went through uh, the dean and it, did, it, didn't, it didn't work. So it is some work to do especially if you want to do it a parallel one or if we have a larger course especially if it's in online we can handle it so we would say okay this is my class that's the other class we're going to do it at the same time so i think if we structure it we can sell it but at this time it's not doable because we tried one time and they said only one of you going to get paid the other one is not going to get paid the other one for the professional development i think most of the community college is going to hit that uh, uh, cost issue with it so somewhere somehow we have to come up with the cost because i know if i go and ask i want to go to berkeley for i don't know a few days or a few months they're going to say okay good luck you know <laughs> we see you when you come back it's not it's not so some of the grants that we have to start writing some of the things that we have to do from the resource point of view that we can come up with something but definitely i think i think that professional development is a big element of these things we should look into it and figure it out yeah, I and I, I must admit now that we many of our courses have moved online, then there are more options now for participating in courses taking place elsewhere. Um, I, I, I mean, I don't know if you're still on the call, but oh, I think you are. You're right there. Um, I'd yes, like to, I'm here. I'd like to um, 
go to this issue about mathematics and statistics and data science because I heard um, I heard Katya say something about maybe we would drop stat 80 altogether or maybe you didn't quite say that and have data science instead and at, at Berkeley we're still keeping a stat class that has basically no programming at all involved and that's for the folks who aren't planning to um, get as deep into the mathematics or the uh, data science or whatever. And um, <clears throat> I also heard from a few of you about Data 100 and there are a lot of math prereqs um, to Data 100. And that's something that I know Ani and I have been now talking with the math department about making changes to on our campus. So I, I'd like Ani, you to talk a little bit about you know, the difference between for example, our data eight and our stat two and the role that they still each play and what you might envision as sort of uh, ways to scale back in terms of the amount of, of mathematics prerequisites if there are different kinds of courses developed. Um, so I'll do my best. I'm not sure I'm going to hit everything uh, that, that, that you asked. Uh, so let me, a little bit of background. We have data eight which has no prerequisite whatsoever and uh, which teaches uh, both computational and inferential thinking. But for a long time, for decades, we've had STAT2, which also has no prerequisites. And it teaches inferential thinking um, and some visualization, but not using computation, using your hands. Uh, and a very minimal uh, algebra. Uh, I should say that that is the course on which data aid is based. Right, so data aid didn't just come from the heads of John De Niro and myself or Deb. It, we have a long history of trying to teach the ideas rather than the formulas. Right, so we, uh, as Deb said, STAT2 still exists. And it is taken by hundreds of students who want some idea of what to do when you have data, but they don't want to go full on. Now, I don't know in your situation whether you can offer both. Right, but we have we still have takers for both. Um, that said, I do understand the frustration of students who take a class, find that it is interesting, and want to go further, and then realize that that class is not satisfying anything that they need to go further. And that is something that Katya was alluding to, and I and I do understand that. And so we actually. Uh, um, took some trouble to make sure that data aid did, was an alternative way to satisfy some requirements. Um, and STAT2 is also one of those alternative ways, and so is STAT20. So we didn't do an either or. We just made sure that both of these were ways to satisfy requirements. And I don't know how much flexibility you have or what uh, the, the uh, constraints are, but that was our way of dealing with it. We haven't replaced anything. We have just added uh, another way of doing things. Now, I will say that some departments have picked up on data eight, and they have said that for our major, data eight uh, is now a prerequisite because we want you, civil engineering is one, right? They want the engineers to be able to handle data. Uh, and they don't say stat two, but that's some other department, not us, right? Every, every time we do something, it's, you know, stat 20 or data eight. Is that kind of what you were? Uh, yeah. One of the things that you would, yeah, I'd like to talk a little bit more about the mathematics prerequisites. Data aid, there is no prerequisite, genuinely no prerequisite. High school, as what I call yeah. Yeah. Ninth, ninth, tenth grade, yeah. just ordinary manipulation, knowing that n is square root of n times square root of n, that, that kind of mathematics. Other than that, there is no math. But if you want to go deeper, then you do need to be fluent with uh, at least the use of notation and some minimal manipulation. I, so not multivariable calculus and Jacobians, right? But some, you know, uh, uh, basic calculations as you would get perhaps in a strong high school class or in an early community college class. Um, so uh, data 100 does require that. And, you know, very crudely data 100 does very uh, interesting multivariable uh, inference, right? Data eight, we are limited. 
Um, and so we require linear algebra. And it's not that we're doing vast amounts of linear algebra. As the student does have to understand an array. They have to understand what it means, you know, is that some things have inverses and some things don't. They don't have to know much theory beyond that, right? Uh, so after all, you're handling arrays of data. You have to understand what those structures are. Um, we have found that some of our students have a great deal of difficulty with this prereq. Um, it's not the easiest thing because, you know, we the prereq, We've still been doing the prereq in the traditional way, which is we tell students, you have to go take a mathematics class. You actually want to be a data scientist, but you have to go and take a mathematics class in the mathematics department because it will be good for you later. Right now, the student doesn't want to become a mathematician, but they have to start out in the math department. And so the math department has sitting in its room hundreds of slightly recalcitrant people. Right? They're swallowing it like medicine. So what we would like to do is to turn that on its head. Start the students out in data eight, where they're using arrays all the time, right? And explain to them, look, if one of your variables is height in centimeters, you don't want another one of your variables to be height in inches. That is silly. Um, to have them go in with this sense that these arrays matter, relations between the columns matter, and Give them a multivariable mathematics class, maybe some multivariable calculus, as well as you know, gradients um, and uh, uh, some linear algebra that capitalizes on what they're already bringing from their data eight class. And so Deb and I are talking uh, with the math department about developing such a thing where data eight is the prereq for the math. <laughs> Right, so that's a whole new ball game. We have only just kind of started sort of rubbing the ball on our trousers, uh, but where that's the next thing we'd like to be able to do. So we'd love to be able to create and possibly online a version of a math class that takes the students' interest in data science and therefore leads them into mathematics. And so, you know, pick the examples accordingly and so on and so forth. Not, don't spend five weeks on row echelon form. Um, so that's a twinkle in our eye. We're we're uh, we're working on it. So um, I, I think I, I, fall 2021, like you were. Yeah, right. fall 2021. Can, can, can I say something? Please. Sure. Yeah. So I was I was thinking about this, but of course I was thinking about it from computer science area. I said, okay, if I want to teach Python and data science, what about if somebody already know the Python? Can I break the class in half and say, okay, if you know Python, come in. I don't know about the statistic part of it, and I don't know how we can divide that. But that's what I was thinking about doing the classes like in a stackable thing. So if you don't have no idea about nothing, just come in and take this class. But if you know this element of it, just take the first half. If you know the other element of it, just take the second half. And that's what I was thinking of building those two unit courses, like half a course. So for those people, because I, 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 we are doing that in computer science right now. So if they go from C++ to Java, a lot of material is repeated again. And they go to Python, they're going to repeat the whole thing again. And it's just a waste of time for our students. And it's not a level class for them. That's, that's what I was thinking, that, you know, one way of doing it. Deb, can I just uh, finish a thought? So uh, at the uh, office hour, I gave you a quote from one of our students who had talked about patterns in randomness. This mathematics that I talked about, that was also inspired. I know exactly who the student is. Feedback after data age, you get student evaluations, right? And those were handwritten in those days. Cap block capitals. I need to take linear algebra. This is a kid who had no interest in doing any mathematics, but he came out of data eight wanting to take linear algebra. So this can be uh, uh, for computer science departments who are interested in increasing the proportion of women in computer science. What we've heard from our students is that this is a good way for women to realize, wait a minute, I actually like coding, right? And they have said that in the introductory computer science class, 
that's not as interesting to them and in the immortal words of one of the students because those just seem like 30 ways of generating the Fibonacci numbers. Right? But the use of computing for analyzing something mm -hmm. is a motivator and that can change. So I think that can have an effect on the population in computer science and in math as well. So it's a great idea to think about in those terms. I, I'm, I'm conscious of the uh, of the time and I I'd like to, um, this has been a great discussion. I think, I feel like I've learned a lot and I'd like to ask for Eric to um, help us figure out what our next step should be. I think Eric, you had something in mind about coming out of this panel. Maybe we could, there are a lot of people on it uh, in the discussion. Maybe we can find ways to um, collaborate going forward as to, um, is to figure out how to bring data science into the community colleges in a way that makes sense to the, the community colleges. Do you want to, uh, did, Eric, I see you there. Hi, awesome, yes. I want to go to Ksenia for really quick for one second because she was somebody who made all these calls and pulled the panel together in her own way. So Ksenia, what are the awesome ways to keep in touch with us? <laughs> well, first of all, I want to thank you all guys for sharing your efforts with us today. Um, so the way we can keep the conversation going is by joining Slack, by emailing us on uh, ds-help ds at berkeley.edu, and you all know my personal email as well now. Um, so. I would like for this conversation to keep going because uh, we are developing resources constantly for community colleges. Uh, this matter is near and dear to my heart as I am a community college transfer. Um, so <laughs> I really want to keep this going. Um, so, but as Ania Dikari said before, we want to help you, but we don't know what to help you with at all times. So it's great to have you there and to tell us what we need to do. <laughs> um, so uh, join our Slack, email us, we're always there for you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Cassandra. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ksenia. And uh, Ksenia has been sort of like the person doing a lot of the outreach here and not just the people on the panel, but a lot of the people in the audience that, you know, we've been trying to get uh, more and more people, uh, you know, in, on the common journey here. Uh, I, you know, I circulated a document last night that was sort of like some goals. I think we've touched on a bunch of that stuff today. Um, there's like, let's help with the CID. Uh, let's help with articulation. Uh, let's put a common template so you can be like, hey, CCSF and Clovis and Pasadena already did this, so you should approve it, right? Like, we think that's what committees respond to. Um, we, you know, want to have some good answers about, like, what is it about Algebra 2? Like, you know, the way somebody just said it in the chat was like, these are students who haven't gotten into Berkeley yet, so they don't have the math that it takes to get into Berkeley, right? This is a good way to think about it. Um, so anyways, let's just have a good answer to like, what math do you need when? And uh, I guess the question of like, what does it take, you know, uh, what does it take to get ready for data 100 in three or four semesters? That's a really great question that we could all work on. I think Dr. Adhikari is definitely thinking about like, what is, linear algebra for data science. Um, you know, I think she's probably thinking about it at the UC level, but like it could map to this transfer level. Um, we have our very first transfer students into the data science major this semester. So we plan that we're gonna learn a whole bunch from, from their experience and sort of like, you know, uh, you know, have a seminar for them to track them. Um, but anyways, we want to keep this community going. We want to keep uh, working together and potentially, uh, you know, have maybe like a quarterly meeting uh, where we where we loop back and find what our goals are. Um, you know, there's a bunch of stuff that that you guys know, like when are those dates to the curriculum committee and when are those dates, you know, to get something ready, uh, you know, and so being able to build a calendar like that the community practice could could meet around. Um, 
you know, in terms of us being able to a provide infrastructure. One other idea that came up was like, could we provide students to help, uh, you know, staff office hours or be lecture, you know, be, you know, be like assistants, lab assistants, you know, um, it's possible we could build that stuff. We, we could think about how to calendarize that and when to offer that. That would be great. Um, we uh, CCSF, so Katya's two of her people came to UC Berkeley to sort of like learn by tip by sort of sitting in on data aid in, in a way. Um, that was great. We would like love to have more boot camps or more way to do this. You know, the way this workshop was and, and Dr. Adhikari used to like teach actual data eight, you know, for a couple hours uh, to to future instructors. Um, so we could think about how to make a sort of boot camp um, like we used to do um, going forward for that part that you talked about, like how to train up the staff to teach it. Um, so so Eric, yeah. do we have a we'll have a list of everyone who's at this meeting right at, in this panel? To say, uh, yeah, great, great. Ksenia is totally on it. Great, thank you. <laughs> I, I wanted to um, say, just browsing through the chat, it looks like there's a lot of experience and expertise among the audience in terms of how to how to make something happen at the community college level. And I would love to continue this with the four panelists as well as other folks in the uh, in the audience. So we'll send out a follow up email and figure out how best maybe we can all coordinate in terms of writing grants together as well and holding additional meetings and and that sort of thing. So thank you all very much. Thanks everybody for a great panel. Thank yeah. you. Thanks guys.